It's Tuesday, time for another tutorial. This week we have my daughter's birthday cake, combining two of her favourites, Jack Skeleton and Jack Sparrow. Start by gluing your first cake layer to the drum with ganache. I'm working with a 5 inch cake as there was only us eating it and we still didn't finish it all. Layer it up as usual with a filling of your choice. Once you're four layers high, or as high as you want your barrel to be, cut in the bottom edge to slope it in. Then move up a little to round that out. You want to keep the middle at its widest and slope down. Then give the top the same treatment. You can see where the widest part is as it still has a little of the caramelisation. Have a little clean up and coat the whole cake with ganache to seal it in. Give that chance to set up and then add the second layer. It's now a little sturdier to work with. Use an acetate smoother or a piece of plastic held in a curve to smooth around the contours of the barrel. Once it's set, cover the top in black sugar paste and angle your scalpel to trim off the excess. Dampen the rest of the barrel and roll out some white paste big enough to fit around the circumference and roll it around the rolling pin. Unroll it around the cake, sticking it as you go until it overlaps. Trim through both layers of paste, remove the spare pieces and push the joints together. Gather the rest of the paste on the top and trim most of the bulk off with a scalpel. Take a straight plastic scraper and use it to push the paste right underneath the base. Trim it off and neaten it up. Open up the paste and trim it leaving a centimetre or so sticking up. Then you want to fold the paste on itself, tucking the cut part down inside. You can skip this part if you like, it's just to make the wooden panels appear like thick, chunky pieces. But then I cover it all up with jelly beans later. Before the whole thing sets, make your own shaped smoother by pushing your fingers into a ball of paste. Use this to buff and flatten out imperfections. Trimming the top edge down with the scalpel now reveals a chunkier ridge, so it looks like thick planks of wood. Taking a Dresden tool, score in rough lines all around the cake for texture. After that, score in some deep ones to separate the panels. With black airbrush colour, fill each crease before roughly covering the whole cake. This is great for practising on, as it doesn't have to be neat. Now grab your water bottle. I use mine on every cake to dampen the ganache, but this time we are spraying the paste. What this will do is make the colour run into all the creases you made. Remove excess colour and water with a piece of kitchen roll. If it's still too grey, just add more water. Now you can see where the black has settled into the lines. Once it's dry, go over the cake in brown to make it look more like a barrel. Once it dries, it will lose its wet shine. Now you're safe to cover the board in white paste using that toilet seat method I keep banging on about. It's in the description box if you're curious. Crumple up some tin foil to create your own texture mat and press it all over the paste. Cover the board in black airbrush colour to bring out the stone look. Also add some extra shading to the cake whilst you have it out. Now Jack Skeleton is super skinny so we're using wires to hold his skeletal frame. I've got four wires here which are around 18 gauge. And also a roll of waterproof tape called Parafilm which you can pick up anywhere they sell florist supplies. I'll also leave it linked below. You can also use regular florist tape for this too if you like, it works in just the same way, stretch to make it stick. Tape up all four wires, covering the bottoms and all the way up to just over halfway.
tick two of the wires and bend them out. These will become arms. Now remember he has a body to go in, so we will need some wire for his shoulders. Leave a gap before bending it, and then bend again for an elbow. Trim down the two remaining wires for his neck and head. Trim his arms so they aren't as long, leaving a centimetre or so for his hands. Now you can insert him straight in like this if you want, as the tape is waterproof and non-sticky on the outside. Or, if you prefer, this will easily slot down inside a regular sized straw. Just push some paste down the top and bottom of the straw to stop the support from rattling around and moving. Now push this down into the centre and adjust the arms where you want them. For Jack's body, roll out some white paste into a carrot shape, or rather more like a parsnip with the end cut off. Lay it on its side and chop straight down the centre. Wet one half and stick it behind the support, pushing it against the wire. Then stick the front half on and give the seams a good squeeze together, rubbing them to minimise the join. Score in a V-neck shape, a tiny line coming from the point and imprint four dots. Roll out a thin string of chocolate paste and join up the holes in a crisscross shape. Dampen the arm wires with water and roll out a thin sausage of white paste with a channel marked down the centre. Lay this on top of the wire, burying the wire into the channel, again squeezing and smoothing the seams. Flatten a piece of white paste and push it against the wire on the neck, gathering it at the back and chopping it down with scissors. Dampen the back and some of the front of the torso. Roll out a thin rectangle of dark navy paste and place it against the body, pushing the rest around under the arm. Trim over the shoulder and cut straight down his side. Repeat the same on the other side. Patch up the back with a wider rectangle, cutting the joins like a seamstress and a tailor. Add a thin string of brown down across the front and then back up to the right shoulder. Add another small piece like the end of a belt and pop in some belt holes. For the buckle, roll a thin string of white and add it to the belt in a loop shape. Cover the joint with a tiny piece of paste. For some floaty shirt accents, roll a spike of paste, flatten it and pull out ruffles with the larger end of the Dresden tool. For hands, flatten an oval of white paste and cut out a triangle for a thumb. Continue to cut out three slits, separate the fingers and roll them gently to lengthen them and round them out. Mark in lines across the knuckles and the finger joints. Roll the wrist to thin it out. Jack Sparrow certainly loves his hand movements, so bend each finger into your desired pose. Gently roll the wrist down the wire.
for flowy sleeves, add a thin rectangle of paste, wrap it around and join it. Add another belt around the waist in brown paste. This one is chocolate flavoured by Renshaw's. Add a scrap piece of fabric hanging over the belt with white paste. To keep his head light on that tiny little neck, we are using part polystyrene, part paste. Just push the ball into the paste, gathering it up around it and rolling out the seams. Push this down onto the remaining wire. For the bandana, cut out a red piece that tapers out to points. Add this around the skull, joining the points at the back. Add in a bit of movement and creases with your Dresden tool. For his features, I'm going to paint them on in black with a fine paintbrush. First, I'm going along for his smile, which is then covered in tiny stitches and crosses. For the eyes, start smaller than you want them, as you can always make them bigger. If you start too big, you can't really make them smaller. Back to the brown again. Roll a small piece for his beard and two smaller spikes coming down from it. Add another small one for a moustache. Finally, have fun covering the whole back of the skull with long spikes. And don't forget a few curly ones peeking from over his bandana. Bling up his hair with various pieces. White spikes, coins and beads in various colours. And whilst we have the silver paint out for the buckle and coin, we can also add some wraps to some hair strands. To finish off the barrel, roll out long strips of grey paste. This has Tylo powder in to help keep it a bit more rigid and not take on the bumps of the wood. You know the score, trace out your name and age onto greaseproof paper. My daughter's name is Abby with two B's, but we only need to trace one because we can cut it twice. Let's not make it any longer than it needs to be. Place the paper over your white paste, trace around the letters and numbers with a Dresden tool and then go over the lines with a scalpel to cut them out. Stick them into place with water and then mix up your favourite gold paint. I use a luster mixed with lemon extract. You can either paint your grey trim in silver paint or just airbrush it with black for shading. Now for treasure. The kids were kindly sent some sweets by fellow caker Sam at Auntie Sam's Cakes. And because they are the donut version, they come in a mixture of pearly pink, gold and crimson rather than just multicolours. So I thought they'd make great treasure for trick or treat master Jack Skeleton. If you'd prefer a more realistic treasure, check out the Niffler Cake tutorial. If the cake is travelling, you can stick the beans down with piping gel. But we aren't leaving the house, so I'm just going to tip them on. Stick some to the board with water. And we're done. Captain Jack and his jelly bean treasure for my now 10 year old. She's a big fan of both Nightmare Before Christmas and Pirates of the Caribbean. So rather than have to make a whole pirate ship, or yet another purple kick with spirals, I came up with this. And the jelly beans made a nice quick fix. I was already two days late making it. What's new? Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please pop me a thumbs up and a comment below. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to join us by clicking the subscribe button to see new tutorials every Tuesday. Thanks guys, see you soon.